and bust some plates. Just, they always want to justify to find themselves not guilty. Price so fucked up high, living in the nick with three people. Shima, Shima, with people. Shima, 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 with people. Shima, Shima, with people. Shima, Shima, They took, I stay humble, I will not be shaken. My people is starting to wake up, their minds scrambling, need a shake up. They rewriting history, whitewashing images, forgery. It's all a conspiracy, crafty counsel from our enemies. They stole our identities, done away with our heritage. Had us working in the field, see, broken, we can't get no settlements. So cruel, they took it too far on them people that resemble Kadar. Perpetual belief, they really hate us, but we quickly coming out of our heads. Talk to my people, miserable to straight hallelujahs. For hundred years, better let it move you. Messiah coming, better let it soothe you. Whoever knew we would be great on the slave ships, we were stowaways. Never made sense that we were throwaways, but it makes sense we hit fadeaways. We serving the ultimate power. The most high, get them hands high. He's running the ultimate hour. Same people eating that manna. But we gotta get that bread. You know, raise lines, carry no manners. It's the true now, Lord, in my head. Ironic, we grew up in wars. Projects, boroughs, and the ghettos. Between us, there's always a war. Check out Kings and the Chronicles. Brothers overseas, same movie. Escape out of their trying. Worship and praise, out of our case. Dancing is all in our dreams. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Facebook Live. Good morning, good morning, Breaking Stronghold Ministries. Good morning, good morning, YouTube. We're keeping it simple. I have not got 30 subscribers, 50 subscribers yet to YouTube. So I'm not able to go to go Facebook, go YouTube Live until I get 50 subscribers. You mean to tell me I can't get 15 people from, from Facebook to just go to YouTube and subscribe to my channel? Wow. That is uh, kind of heartening. You know, I have probably 50 to 100 people, 100 to about 100 people, 150 people listen to me every week. You mean to tell me a brother can't get a hookup? Come on, Facebook, help a brother out, will you? But good morning, good morning again to you. Happy Sabbath day, happy Sabbath day. This is the day that the Most High have made, so be glad and rejoice in it. I hope you have had a great week. I hope that you have um, gotten all the things that your heart desire. I hope that you are doing the will of the Most High. I hope not just you, but your family have gotten everything your heart desire. Uh, my week was pretty decent. You know, I can't complain too much. Um... And I won't complain because it could be some, I could be in a worse situation than I'm in. And 
And I know it's a lot of people that's in a worse condition than I am in. So I don't have a, any room to complain. I'm happy. I'm content where I am. So, um, you know, y'all see that in the middle of the night, last night, Russia, or I'm not going to say Russia, but Ukraine, um, gas, pi gas pipelines did explode. Um, yesterday, Russia and Ukraine started shelling bombs against each other <clears throat> um, on yesterday. And we had a friend to call us on yesterday and tell us that um, she was giving advice to go buy food as much as she can because um, the Red Cross have bought up all the MREs. So... You know, I hope that you all are preparing. I hope you all have um, <clears throat> stored up and did everything you needed to do in case it, so when it hits the Americas. Hope that you'll be prepared for it. Um, but let us go ahead and get started in the book of Ex Exodus 1 through 17. And it reads, And God spake all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah thy El, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other ills before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. <clears throat> thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, thy El, am a jealous El, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that keep my commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahuwah, thy El, in vain, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy works. But the seventh day is the Sabbath. The seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah thy El. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughters, thy manservants, nor thy maidservants, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers, that is, within thy gates. <clears throat> For in six days Yahuwah made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy fathers and thy mother that thy days be long upon the land which Yahuwah thy ill giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, and thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Let us do the prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Die to your kingdom, power to your glory, forever and ever. So let it be. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Facebook Live, good morning, good morning. Breaking Strongholds Ministries, good morning, good morning. YouTube with Orlando, keeping it simple. How you all doing this morning? I hope you all are prepared for whatever may come this week. I hope everyone is prepared if there is a war. I hope everyone is prepared mentally and physically for whatever may happen. I do hope that you all are ready because tomorrow is the last day of the Winter Olympics. Everyone will be going home probably on Monday or Tuesday of next week. So, I hope you all are really mentally and spiritually prepared in case something comes on our doorstep. 
And I hope that you all will be ready. So if you could turn to the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. 1 through 10. And the key verse is verse 7. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I may have got about three or four hours of sleep. And, um, I don't really know why I didn't get a lot of sleep, but I know I didn't get a lot of sleep. But I know I'm going to take a nap this afternoon. But, um, the key verse is chapter 7 in Ezekiel chapter 28. And it reads, Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defy thy brightness. Let me read that over. <sighs> Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their sword against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. What does the word terrible means? The word terrible means I will bring and I will bring a stranger upon thee, a fearful, a powerful, a mighty or oppressor, a great power, a violent nation, and they shall they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile the, thy brightness. The word terrible means fearful, powerful, mighty, oppressor, in great power, strong, violent. That's what the word terrible means. So when he said, I will bring a nation against you, it's going to be a strong and mighty and powerful nation. And it means to break a dread for oppressed, prevail, to shake and tremble. It means that this nation will come against this, this, this country of Tyrus. This nation that comes against Tyrus, Tyre, will be a powerful nation. And if I may give a if I may give a title of the text this morning, the title of the text this morning is Judgment Has to Start with Man First. Judgment has to start with man first. If I may give some um <clears throat> if I may give some words, vocabulary this morning. Pride, the word pride, it, it is a mid-English 13th to 15th century, century word. It means, pride means unreasonable self-esteem, especially as one of the deadliest sin, deadly sins. Pride means haughtiness, overbearing treatment of others, love of display. That's the negative side of pride. Pride also can be have a positive side. Means proper pride. Means personal honor. Exalted position. Splendor. That which makes a person or people most proud of. My pride is that I'm happy I'm an Israelite. 
But that does not mean that I'm going to use my pride and abuse other people. Pride can be used in two ways, a negative and a positive. But in the context that I'm going to be using it today, pride was used in a negative connotation. Pride had a negative mentality. Pride has an arrogance. Pride had a very arrogance in this country called Tyree. The negative side of Tyree, again, is unreasonable self-esteem, especially as one of the deadly sins. Pride means haughtiness, overbearing treatment of others, love or display. That's what pride means, and that's the way it will be used in this context today. Humble. Humble means... Humble is a 13th century word too. So, humble means submissiveness, respectful, lowly in manner, modest, not self-observing, asserting. It means obedient. That's what humble means. That's what humble means. Okay? If humble means submissive, respectful, lowly in manner, modest, not a, not self-observing, asserting, 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 and obedient. Okay? So, when we're looking at the book of Ezekiel chapter 28, the Most High is dealing with Ezekiel. And he's dealing with Ezekiel to talk to this country called Tyre. Let me read you a little bit about what Tyre is. Tyre is an ancient, ancient seaport city of the Phoenicians. Situated north of Palestine. Philistine. Okay, Tyre was the principal seaport of the Phoenicians coast about 20 about 40 kilometers south of Sidon and 56 kilometers north of Carmel Carmel it consists of two cities a rocky coastal city on the main line on the mainland and a small island city okay the history of Tyre was an ancient city according to one tradition it was founded about 2750 BC. How Sidon, Ty uh, Tyre's sister city, was probably older. Sidon was probably older than Tyre, perhaps even the mother city. The Greek poet Homer mentions Sidon's wares without reference to Tyre. But in the period of 12 to 870 BC, Tyre was one of the independents for Phoenicia. This enabled Tyre to realize its expansionist dream. Hiram, I, the ruler of Tyre, apparently began to colony at Tarshish in Spain. He fortified Tyree, two harbors, and one of the north of the city and one of the south. Well, basically what Tyree was, it was a very well-known city. And it was one of the cities on the seaport in Palestine. And it was very popular. And it was, it was basically controlled by the Phoenicians. But it, it had a certain ruler that was ruling Tyre. It had a ruler that was ruling the rulers. It had a spirit that was controlling the rulers. And when we're talking about the city of Tyre, I just gave you the location. It was on 
It was in Palestine. It was a sea coast city, and it, it was one of the one of the major cities at the time. But it had a spirit within that city. Because when we look at Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 1 through 10 is dealing with the physical man of Tyree. But 11 through 20 is 11 through 19 is dealing with the spiritual leader of Tyree. How do you know that we're, we're dealing with two different types of leaders and how I know that we're dealing with the physical leader of Tyree? And that is in verse 2. And I'll get to it in just a second. But what I want us to understand that judgment comes from the physical, then the spiritual first. This judgment comes through the physical, and then it comes to the spiritual. Okay? Why do I say that? Because we have to understand that we're spiritual creatures and then we're physical we're having a physical experience. So always the physical will always be judged before the spirit. Let me read you something. Because we have to understand that Satan, the, the Hashitan, was cast down here to earth. The Hashitan was cast down here on earth. That is in Ephesians 6 and 12. And he would deceive the earth for a certain period of time. So, once we understand that he would deceive the, 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 the people for a period of time, we still got to understand that, that the people that who are ruling the earth today are ruled by certain spirits. They are ruling through certain spirits. They, the Hashitan spirit has never left the earth. It has always been here and it still is functioning through people as of today. But let me read let me read you something. I was finished reading up the book of Adam and Eve. This I'm still reading the book of Adam and Eve, right? And it's in chapter 17, verse 1 through 4, and then I'm gonna skip down to verse 12. It says, When Satan, the hater of all good, listen to that. Adversary means the opposite. That's what an adversary is. It means it goes against. Adversary means that it goes against the good. Or adversary means it goes against the bad. So, listen to it. it says, and when Satan, the hater of all good, saw how they continue in prayer. I was talking about Adam and Eve. They was continuing in prayer because of their situation. They was upset because they had to go into the cave. And they recognized that when they was in the garden, they was in light. But when they went into the cave, they was in darkness. And Adam and Eve really didn't want to go into the cave because they recognized that they was entering into an area of darkness. And they really didn't want to go into the cave. They didn't want to go into this dark location. But they had to go into this dark location because of the situation that they put themselves in. So now when they entered the cave, let's see what happened. It says, and when Satan, the hater of all good, saw how they continue in prayer, how Adam and Eve continue in prayer, and how, the, and how El communed with them, how God communed with them and comforted them, and how he had accepted their offerings, Satan made an apparition. Apparition, a uh, apparition. Apparition is a ghost or a spirit-like image of a person. The apparition is an A P A R I T I O N. Apparition, or Satan made an image or a godlike spirit, 
and he began to trans and he and he began with transforming his host his army of angels and his in his hands was a flaming fire and they were in a great light see satan had transformed himself into a flaming fire a great light he then placed his throne near the mouth of the cave between, because he could not enter into it by reason of their prayers. And he shed light into the cave until the cave glistened over Adam and Eve while his host began to sing praises. And Satan did this in order that when Adam saw the light, he should think within himself that it was a heavenly light and that Satan hosts were angels and that God had sent them to watch at the cave and to give him light in the darkness. Satan presented himself as if he was a good or that he came from the from God when in actuality he did not come from God. He presented himself at the front of the cave because Adam and Eve was praying. They was upset because they was in the situation. They was mad because of whatever it was. And they was trying to get out of this situation. They was tired of being in darkness. They wanted to continue. They wanted to get into light. So what, what Satan did he presented himself for what they was praying for, which was light. See, we don't think that Satan hears your prayers. Satan hears your prayers just as much as the Most High hears your prayers. And it talked about that in Daniel. That sometimes Satan will try to block your prayers from reaching the Most High. So, when, certain, when Satan heard his prayers, Satan presented himself as what Adam was asking for. So now, Adam understood his condition. He understood his situation. He understood how he felt the first time. So what Adam did in verse 12, let's read. No sooner... Had Adam said this, no, let me go to verse 11. It says, but lo, we see these hosts that stand at the mouth of the cave. They are a great light. They sing loud praises. If they are of some of God's, then thou tell me. If they are sent by thee. Inform me of the reason for which thou hast sent them. So what Adam did this time, he prayed to the Most High to guide him in this quest or how to deal with these angels that presented themselves before the cave. Adam said, I'm not making the same mistakes that, that I did in the past. Before I make the same mistake again. I'm going to pray to the most high. That he give me the answers that I need. Before I make a decision. So in verse 12 it says. No sooner had Adam said this. An angel from El appeared unto him. In the, in the cave. In the cave. Who said unto him, O oh, Adam, fear not, this is Satan and his host. He wishes to deceive you as he deceived you at first. For the first time he was hidden in the serpent. But this time he, was, he is come to you in similitude of an angel of light. In order that when you worship him. He might dethrone you in the very presence of God. Why am I reading that? 
Because the same way that the Most High uses people to bless you and to curse you, it's the same thing that I just showed you what Satan does. Satan go functions through people to be able to get his purpose done on earth. And that also goes to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 through 4 it says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters was born unto them, that the, son, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And, the, and Yahuwah said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. And there were giants in the earth those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bare children to them. And that same became mighty men which were of old and renowned. And El saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of thought of his heart was only evil continually. So, we have to realize that the evil and demonic spirits that roam the earth today roam the earth through man. And the evil in the in in the in the in the most high spirit roams through people of the earth today. Because there's gonna always be a confrontation of good and evil. And that is something that we have to realize and deal with because when it says host, H-O-S-T-S, -S, host, that means army. That means that when the Hashitan was cast out of heaven, man, the Hashitan was cast out of heaven, he brought a group of angels with him. So that means that his angels or his spirits was on the earth just like the most high angels and spirits are on the earth. So when we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 28, 1 through 10, how we know that his angels was in verse 1 through 10. Let me go to verse 1 and then verse 2. It says, And the word of Yahuwah came again unto me, saying, Ezekiel, son of man, say unto the prince, Listen to this. Say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith, Yahuwah El, because thy heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, or I am a El. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the people, yet thou art a man, and not God. Thou Though thou set thy heart as the heart of God. Okay, so look at verse 2. It says the prince. Now let us go down to verse, verse 12. Because it's a separation. It's a, different, it's a difference. In verse 12 it says... Ezekiel, son of man, take up a limitation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith Yahuwah El, thou seal up the sons full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. It's a difference in verse 12 compared to verse 2. In verse 12 it says, King of Tyrus. In verse 2 it says Prince of Tyrus. 
So we're dealing with a man in verse 2. And we're in the verse 10 verses, and then we're dealing with a spirit in verse 10 through 19. So when we understand that we're dealing with man, the Most High is dealing with man right now, because it also says, Yet thou art a man, and not ill, though thou set thy heart as the heart of God. Okay, so now my first point I want to deal with, I want to deal with, I want us, I want us to understand that the Hashitana, the devil, deals through or work through people just like the Most High work through people. Just like the Hashitana used the elements of the land to destroy Job and his family and everything that he had. And make Job sick. So he used the same elements that the Most High uses to bring judgment on the people. So because he has allowed, he has been given permission to do that. So now, if I may give a point, the reason why judgment has to start with man first is because of pride. Pride. In Proverbs 16 and 18, it says, Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Before a fall. Okay? Before he fall. So how did you know that this king had pride? Let's go back to verse 28. Let's go back to chapter 28. Verse, we're going to read 3, 2 through 5. Because we have to understand, when, you have, when you're so prideful, you're going to have a certain, certain mentality. It says, pride is an unreasonable self-esteem, especially as one of the deadly sins. Pride is haughtiness, overbearing treatment of others. Love of display means boastful, means showing off, means high-minded. Okay? So it says, now, the reason why this prophecy is coming against the prince of Tyre, or the son of or the man of Tyre is because of verse 3. Let's go to verse 2 first. It says, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus said the who are am, because thy mind is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I am a heir. I sit. You just have said in your mind, you put yourself in a position of God in the midst of of the people. Yet thou art a man and not God. Though thou set thy mind as a mind of God. It says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that that there is no secret that they can hide from thee. It says, with thy wisdom and with thy understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and has gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. He said, you have said through your mind that you're, you're, you're God. He said, you will put yourself in a position to make yourself think that you're God. And you have put yourself in a position in front of the, all the nations to think that you are a God. But the Most High is saying, you ain't nothing but a man, a creation. Even though you think you're something, 
in your mind, you ain't nothing but a man. And then he says, he says in verse 4, he said, You have, he said, Thy wisdom and thy understanding, thou hast gotten the riches and has gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. He said, You have used your wisdom to gain profit. He said, you have used your wisdom to gain profit by trickery and sorcery and all that other stuff. Then he said, by thy great wisdom and by thy trick, traffic, has thou increased thy riches and thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. The word traffic means trade. The word traffic, it says, by thy great wisdom and by thy tra trades has thou increased thy riches and thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. He said, you have lifted yourself up because of your wealth. He said, you have gained your wealth because of your trade and barter. So because of all the things that you have, you have become a proudful nation. And how can I relate that to today? How can I relate that to today? How can I relate that to today? Who they say the richest country in the world? Who has it going on in the world today? Or who had it going on in the world today? And how did they get all the wealth that they got today? The U.S. The U.S. See, the U.S., Got everything they got through the slave trade. That was the foundation of this country. They had over 265 years of free, free labor. So if you can have 265 years of free labor, you don't mean to tell me that you can't gain plenty of wealth? Then when you have the, share, uh, the Jim Crow laws, you have 50 years of Jim Crow, which is the same as slavery. You mean that you can't gain an extra amount of wealth through that, through trade, which is working? The number one commodity during the slave trade was cotton in human, in human bodies. First, it was, the, it was the bodies, the slave bodies, and then there was the cotton. Because everything was produced from cotton. Clothes, linen, blankets, everything was produced through cotton. So how they gained their silver and gold was through their trade, which was slavery, which was human commodities and cotton. Cotton was better than gold or silver. But they set themselves up to be as if they set themselves up to be in their minds as if they are God. And they put themselves in a position as if they was acting like God. Acting as if they just got it going on with no problems. Let's go to Isaiah 2 and 12. Let me go to verse 11 first. And the reason it said, The lofty look of a man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. 
And, uh, and Yahuwah alone shall be exalted in that day. It says, For the day of Yahuwah of hosts shall be upon everyone is, that is proud, a proud and lofty. And upon everyone that is lifted up, he shall be brought low. See, the Most High never wants you to think that you're better than what you really are. He never wants you to think that you're better than what you really are, who you really are. You're just a creation for a purpose. And you have what you have, and that's all it is. Okay, let's go to Proverbs 26 and 12. Let's go to verse 11 first. It says, Proverbs 26, 11 and 12, it says, As a dog returned to his vomit, so a fool returned to his folly. See a a man wise in his own conceit. There is no hope of a fool within of him. See, the Most High despises fools. He hates them because they're thinking of themselves as, as being more than who they really are. They're making themselves be the S H I T when they ain't nothing but the S H I T. See, if we don't have the mindset of this right here, Genesis 1 and 1. If we don't have this in our mindset, in Genesis 1 and 1, it says, In the beginning, El created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of El moved upon the face of the water. If we don't have that theology or that thought process, we're going to act like fools, thinking that we are doing something when actually the spirit of the Most High is doing it. See, when you lift yourself up so much with pride to think that you can think that you're a God and you put yourself in a position to think that you're a God because you're among the people and you're thinking that you're among the people and you're controlling the people the way you want to control the people and you think that you're doing this from your own strength, you're a fool. And it's all because of your pride. And see... When you look at the, this country, Tari, that's what they did. They thought they was the bomb diggity bomb. They thought that they was the bomb diggity bomb. See, the most I hate that. It's just like when you're looking at Egypt and Pharaoh and Moses, Moshe and Aaron and the most high. See, that story was about God, the Most High, showing man, you ain't nothing. That's what that story was all about. That's what it was about. Man thinking that he's more than what he is. And see, the Most High had to show him that he ain't nothing. He is a creation of the most high. That's why he said, let us create man in our image. Man didn't say, let me create man in my image. The most high said, let me create man in our image. That right there is a humility point to show us that we came from something other than ourselves. So if we came from something other than ourselves, that means that we should 
have a humbling spirit to appreciate the spirit that created us for a divine purpose. But because when we think that we are the bum diggity because of the physical, tangible things that we have, he's going to show us that we're nothing. Because in verse 4 and 5, that's what it's all about. Physical and tangible things. It says, with thy wisdom and thy understanding, thou hast gotten the riches and has gotten silver and gold into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy tra traffic or trade, has thou increased thy wisdom and thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. It's time about the material possessions. See, some people think they got it going on because of what they have. Not because of what they're trying to do. And not the purpose they're serving. It's because of what they have. Not realizing that a tornado can come and strike and take everything you have away today or tomorrow. So if you're saying that you're the SHIT today, when you got three cars and then five hundred thousand dollar house and all this, that and the other, will you be that way and will you have that same mentality tomorrow if a tornado came and destroyed everything? Would you still have that same mentality? Majority of the time, no. Because you only good as your possessions are with most people. You only as good or as worthy as your possessions. But let me tell you something. We look down on the trash man. We look down on the custodians. But don't let the trash man come for two weeks and see how you act. Don't let the bathroom in your in your at your job get cleaned up for two weeks and see how you act. The same people who we look down on is the same people we need every day to keep our life comfortable. But we have the tenacity or the audacity to look down on people who we think that is not worthy, but we need them. Every day of the week to keep our life comfortable. That's why the Most High is so he's so mad and upset with this man at Tyree because he'll put himself in a position to think that he's something when he really ain't because of his pride. So let's go to verse 6. In Ezekiel chapter 28. Verse 6 in Ezekiel chapter 28. Thank you, baby. It says, Therefore, do set thee who are ill, because thou hast set thy heart as the heart of God. The reason why I'm getting ready to do what you do is because of who you, what you did. See, the Most High is responding off of your behavior. However you respond is how He responds. Whatever you decide to do is how He's going to respond to you because of what you decided to do in your mind. Because the word He said... Therefore, if do say you who are ill because the word causes reason. The word because it means for an unused root meaning to pay attention, properly heed, implication, purpose. It says um, indicate the reason or cause. For much as, as seeing then that, whereas, why? The most has, the most has said, because of your pride is the reason why I'm going to do something. Because of who you are 
car is the reason why I'm going to do something. Because of your mentality is the reason why I'm going to do something. Because of what you worshiping is the reason why I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Let's go to Exodus. 9 and 17. Listen to this. Exodus 17 and 18. Exodus 9, 17 and 18. It reads... As yet, as yet, exalted thyself against my people, that thou would not let them go. Behold, tomorrow, about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as has not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Send therefore now and gather thy cattle and all that has in the field. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home, the hell shall come down upon them and they should die. See, the Most High was dealing with Pharaoh because the Most High had to show Pharaoh that you ain't nothing but a man. I'm the one who controls the elements. I'm the one that can spend, send a spirit into somebody else's head to tell somebody else to do something and then tell somebody else to do something against this person here and so forth and so forth. See, when we're playing checkers with the most, when we're playing checkers, the most high is playing chess. See, in order to understand them, we, it's very hard for us to understand the Most High, but in, under, in order for us to understand some of the things that the Most High even try to do or do, are doing, we can't think from an earthly realm. That is checkers. See, Most High is always moving pieces to set things up for His glorification. And that's how you play chess. See, chess is moving over here, but he also trying to come. He's going to really make the big move over here. But you thinking because he moved to the right, he ain't doing nothing on the left. Because he moved to the right, it's really, he's setting up over here on the left. See, a lot of the times we think that the, the war between Russia and Ukraine is about Russia and the Ukraine. But it actually, it ain't. It's about the children of Israel. See, Russia and Ukraine is on the left. They playing checkers. And how people see Russia and Ukraine, they see that as checkers. Most high see that as checkers. But those people who have spiritual eyes, who understand the word, they see it as chess because they're using Russia and Ukraine for the deliverance of the children of Israel on the right. But if you don't have that spiritual eye, you can't see it. So the Most High said, because of your craziness, I brought death, not just on the people, but on your livestock. Pharaoh, now stop the hailstone. Stop the frogs, the plagues, stop the lice. Stop the death that's going to come. See, the, and the thing about it is, the most high hardens Pharaoh's heart to push Pharaoh to this point because he, sh he wanted to show Pharaoh that you ain't doing nothing. I'm making all the move. See, he don't, he don't make America so prideful. So, has so much pride in their military, and so much pride in everything that they got, they keep pushing it. They keep pushing it. They keep putting it, putting their hand in the side of Russia. They keep agitating it. 
not realizing that just the Most High is doing that to them. He don't harden America's heart. See, America is proud or proud. See, Russia is trying to be humble, saying, let us have, let's talk about it, man. Let's not go to war, man. Let's not do this. Let's not do that. America, that's what Russia said. Let's not do this because I just don't want you on my borders. Why you can't respect that? But America said, I can do what I want to do, how I want to do it, the way I want to do it, and ain't nothing you can do about it. Russia said, well, okay, can I send military installations to Cuba? No, you do. We're going to bond them ships. That's the arrogance. That's the pride. Let's go to Isaiah 26 and 11. I'm going to go to verse 10 first. It says, Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness? In the land of the uprightness, will he deal justly unjust? In the land of the uprightness, will he deal unjustly? And will he not behold the majesty of Yahuwah? Yahuwah, when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see, but they will see and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Yea, the fire of thy enemy shall devour them. Yahuwah will thou ordain peace for us. For thou also hast wrought all our work in us. What this is saying? Yahuwah, when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see. See, they don't see what the Most High is doing. The people who have spiritual eyes see. They're excited. They're glorifying it. They're praising. Because they see the wickedness that is upon the earth. It says, when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see. But they shall see. They don't see, but they shall see. And be ashamed for their envy at the people. Yea, the fire of thy enemy shall devour them. They're going to realize that, oh man, they were all a set up. This is all a set up for my demise. But they're not going to realize that until it's almost over. And see, my wife is going through some stuff. Right? Small stuff, but some stuff. She's not realizing that everything that she's going through was a divine setup. But it's sometimes it's hard for us to see the divine setup because of we're in the midst of it at the time. And that's what it is. A lot of the times when we're in the midst of something, we can't see the divine setup until we step back out of the situation. Because when we step back and get out of the situation and not take it personal, that's when we can see the divine setup. The divine setup is exposure to whatever it is. But as long as you continue to be in it, you won't see it. But as soon as you step back out of it, you can see it. See, it says, but they shall see and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Only reason, the only way that you can, only way that people can see shame and you can, 
And they can get the shame is when people are removed from it who protect who who's stopping the shame from happening. That don't make no sense, do it. See, good people, when they're in a situation, they're always trying to prevent shame from happening. But in order for shame to happen, the good people got to remove themselves so that the wicked people can be revealed to the people so that the wicked people can see, be seen and see their shameness. That's what's happening now. Everybody know that Russia ain't going to use no chemical war. But they came out yesterday and said that Russia trying to use chemical warfare. Everybody know Russia ain't going to do that. But the United States is putting this on like they did with Syria, Iraq, Libya. Now they're doing it with Russia. They're using the same tactics that they did back then. They're using them now. Okay, 1 Corinthians, I'm finna get ready, get, ready, get ready to stop in a minute. 1 Corinthians 10 and 22. I'm going to go to verse 21 first. It says, Ye cannot drink the cup of, the, of Yahuwah and the cup of the devil. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the devil. Do we provoke Yahuwah to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? See, when we have that prideful mentality, we're saying that we can do whatever we want to and we start to develop a certain mentality about ourselves that we are stronger than him, that we can do it and we don't need him for anything. Let's go back to Ezekiel. Verse 7. So we understand because of their heart, verse 7 through 9, verse 7 through 10 is what the Most High is going to do. But okay? It says, Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defy thy brightness. Defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the death of them that are slain in the midst of the people. Will thou yet say before him they, that slay thee, I am God, I am El, but thou shalt be a man and no El in the hands of him that slay thee. Thou shalt die the death of an uncircumcised by the hands of strangers, for I spoke it, saith Yahuwah El. See, a lot of time, people think they know what they're doing, but in actuality, they don't know what they're doing. Because your pride is why the most high brain judgment. Listen to verse 9, 9 and 10 again. It says, Will thou yet say before him that slay thee, that kill you, I am God, but thou shalt be a man and no God in the hands of him that slay thee. He said, all that crap that you were talking in verse 2 through 5, when that man come up on you and kill you, you can't say that you're God no more. You got to say that you're an ordinary Joe. They got trick, hoodwink, and bamboozle. Then it says, For thou shalt die the death of an uncircumcised by the hands of strangers, for I spoke it. 
and saith he who. That's the worst death that you can die of. A shameful death because of your pride. Let me read you something. Isaiah 23. 8 and 9. It says, Who has taken counsel against Tyree, the crowning city, whose merchants are princes, whose traders are the honorable of the earth? It says, Who has taken counsel against Tyree? The answer is, the Yahuwah of hosts has proposed it to slay the pride of all glory. And to bring into contempt to contempt all the honorable on the earth. It says, Who has taken counsel? The Most High has done it. Why? To bring into contempt all the honorable on the earth. He said, I need to check these people. I need to bring them down to the earth because they don't got out of hand. They thinking they more than what they is. So I got to use another group of people to bring these people down. Let's go to Psalms 55. And 15. It's be 14 and 15. It says, Who took sweet counsel together? And walk unto the house of God in company. He says, let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell. For the wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon Yahuwah and I will call upon El and Yahuwah shall save me. Evening and morning at noon I will pray and cry aloud. And he shall bear my vo and he shall hear my voice. Last one, and I'm closing. John eight and twenty four. Go to twenty three first. He said, and he said unto them, Ye are, be ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I say therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. What am I saying? Judgment has to start with man first. The physical. Then he deals with the spirit. Why he got to deal with man first? Because of pride. Man has so much pride that it destroys the whole earth. Pride destroys relationships. Pride destroys Friendships, pride, pride destroys countries, pride destroys everything. Pride is an unreasonable self-esteem, especially as one of the deadly sins. Pride is haughtiness, overbearing treatment of others. That's what you see going on in America today. You see everybody riding around here with an American flag on their car. Because they're so prideful of, the, of who they are and of this country, but not realizing the sins of this country. But they're proud to be an American, but not recognizing the sins of America. See, salvation comes through 
humility. Humility is submission, respectful, lowly in manner, modest, not self-asserting, obedient. That's where salvation comes from. Humility. Or humbleness. So if you want to have. Salvation. You have to have humility. Because Russia is part of. The Israelites. Salvation. Salvation. In 1 Samuel 2 and 7, it says, I'm going to go to verse 6. It says, Yahuwah killeth and maketh a lie. He bringeth down to the grave and he bringeth up. Yahuwah make poor and make rich. He bringeth low, he uplift. He lift up. He raised up the poor out of the dust. He lift up the beggars from the dewhill to set them among the prince. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillar of the earth are Yahuwah's. And he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints. And the wicked shall be silenced in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. Listen to that. For by strength... Shall no man prevail. He said you're not going to do this by your own personal thing. That's where our salvation comes. Our salvation comes through the most high. Being humble and having humility. Luke. And I'm closing. Luke 14 and 11. It says, For whosoever exalt himself shall be abased, means brought down. And he that humbles himself shall be lifted up, exalted. Seventy five and seven it says But El is the judge, he put it down one and set it up another. Judgment has to start with man first. Why? Because of pride. Pride is the beginning of destruction. By Yahuwah. So everything that you're seeing going on today. Yahuwah is doing it. But your salvation comes through hum humility. Understanding Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning. El created the heavens and the earth. That's letting you know that man didn't have anything to do with nothing. And when you understand that, you need to have humility to have salvation. When you set yourself up so high to act like you the S-H-I-T, yes, you will be the S-H-I-T. So that concludes the teachings for today. I hope everyone learned something from it. Everything you see today is the most high playing chess. He ain't playing checkers. We look at from the physical. We look, we're looking at the checkers. We're looking at it from the spiritual. We understand chess. So let me pray so we can go. I hope you have a rest of the a happy Shabbat. And that um, I hope you've been buying food. I hope you got your ammo together. I hope you got everything you think you may need for what's going on because they just bombed Ukraine yesterday. They bombed a pipeline in the United States. They've been sending ammo over there to Ukraine. They've been deploying military
personnel over there too, Poland. So it's just waiting. Let's see what happens next week. So let us pray. Abba, as we come to you today, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we give you all the honor and the glory. Abba, we thank you for everything that you have done. We thank you for what you're continuing to do. Abba, we see that you're playing checkers. Chess, not chess. Che checkers. We see that you are destroying man through his own sinful nature, and he does not understand that. See, people, are, we don't understand, Abba, that we're brought down because of our own mindset of ourselves and the situation that we're in. Not realizing that we need to humble ourselves and be thankful that you put us in this situation. You put us, you gave us everything that we have. You put us in a position to keep the things that we have. And we need to humble us. Our salvation comes through humility and, hum and humbling ourselves to your word. But we do understand that destruction comes because of pride. Because of what we think we did when we actually didn't do anything. So Abba, as we come to you today, we thank you for everything. We thank you for what we see going on. We thank you for what you have given us. We thank you for what, you, what you're what you about to give us. Uh, we thank you for the eyes to hear, the ears to eyes to hear. I mean, the ears to hear, the eyes to see, and the mouth to speak, the legs to walk, the arms to carry, the fingers to write. We thank you for those because we understand that some people don't have the things that we have. So we acknowledge you for the small things, Abba. Because we can be in a car accident and all that can be taken away. So as we come to you today, we understand that our salvation comes from humility. But we also understand that destruction comes because of pride. So Abba, we ask that you turn our hearts away from pride and let us continue to walk in humility. Let us understand Genesis 1. Because at that point there, it's letting us know who is involved in everything. But let us also understand that the Hashitan moves through people. As well as you moving through people. Or you allow your spirits and your angels or your messengers to function through people. So uh, we ask that you just let us have a discerning heart of the spirits. And continue to walk in your protection, your word of wisdom, and your understanding. And in all these things we pray in your whole name. So let it be. Shalom, shalom, shalom. You all have a blessed one. And um, prepare, prepare. If you can start a garden, start a garden. Have a good one. He must fulfill his promise. His will will be done. And there's no one that can stop it. If I were you, I would seek the most high for the truth. So many will be gone, but only because of you. Be careful of all your deeds. You are the light to your enemy. You were given the Responsibility, so stay away from my idolatry. Look up in the sky, can't you see the sign? This is the last, this is the last we're living.